The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, Camtel, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome back to this learning session. As you all know, I am Madame Jenge Mary, I say your law teacher. And I'll be taking a lesson in Form 7 that is upper seat for all commercial students. So if you're a commercial student, please just grab your seat and pay keen attention. All right, before we proceed to the lesson of today, in our last class, we saw a very interesting topic. And that topic was the trader. And you remember that at the end of the lesson, I gave a consolidation exercise or what we call assignment. And I hope everybody did the assignment. So we'll do the revision of the assignment and then we dive into the lesson for today. In our last uh, class, the assignment was to examine the qualities of a trader and list three obligations of a trader. So, the first quality of a trader is that a trader must carry out the act of trading regularly, whether the act is by form or by nature. So, I'll let you take you back before we continue or we proceed with the qualities of a trader. First of all, who is a trader? A trader is a person, or we can equally call him a businessman, who does commerce or business as a regular occupation or activity. So, for somebody to be known or called a good trader, or for somebody to have the qualities of a trader, he must first of all carry out the act of trading regularly, whether the trade is by act or by nature. Secondly, the trader has to take the business as his profession. And thirdly, the act of commerce must be carried out by the trader on his personal account bearing his name. But, are the obligations or the duties of a trader. Remember we said obligations equally means duties. So what are the duties of a trader? The first is that the trader has an obligation to register his business. And remember I took an example last time that somebody hawking granite or oranges on the street, you cannot actually call that person a trader because such businesses most at times they are not registered. And we know the purpose of registration, right? The purpose of registration is for accountability and for what? Tax payment. The second obligation of a trader is that the trader has an obligation to pay taxes. And remember, taxes are very important to the government because they are the major source of government revenue. Thirdly, a trader must keep accounting records meaning for a trader to be called a trader, if I can put it that way, they should be able to keep a good account of their records. Now, our lesson for today is Lesson 3. And the title of our lesson is Business Units or Business Organizations. 
So you can either call them business units or business organizations. This lesson is a little bit broad. So we have subdivided the lessons into two. On the one hand, we have unlimited liability businesses. And on the other hand, we have limited liability companies. So what we'll be looking at today is unlimited liability businesses. Before we move into our lesson proper, I would like you to, to, to know the lesson plan. First thing on our lesson plan is the objectives. Remember the objectives equally means the aim, what we intend to achieve at the end of the lesson. Secondly, we'll be looking at previous knowledge that has been done already. Previous knowledge is just a revision or a recap of the last lesson so that your memory should be refreshed. And then thirdly, we will discover the lesson proper. We'll go into the details of our lesson for today, which is unlimited liability businesses. Fourthly, you know it's our usual thing. We'll always give application exercises. That is, I'll ask some questions as far as the lesson for today is concerned, and you'll give me answers for me to know if the lesson has been well digested or understood. And lastly, you have a take-home exercise, which is an assignment. What are our objectives for today? The first objective is for you to identify business unit. Meaning at the end of today's lesson, each and every student in Upper City Commercial should be able to identify a business unit. Secondly, they should be able to state the OHADA Uniform Act, which studies commercial transactions in Cameroon. Thirdly, every student should be able to define unlimited liability companies and determine their advantages and disadvantages. So if you are a student who is aspiring to become a businessman or a businesswoman or an entrepreneur in the future, from these lessons of business unit, you should be able to know and determine the kind of business you would like to do in future, looking at their advantages and disadvantages. So our previous lesson was on the trader. I said at the beginning of the lesson that a trader is a business person who carries out business as a regular activity or a regular occupation, meaning that trade or business is his only and main occupation. And we went further to look at the qualities. What qualifies somebody to be called a trader? And then we looked at the various duties or obligations of a trader. So let's dive into our lesson proper. As I earlier said, we'll be looking at lesson three today, which is titled Unlimited Liability Businesses. Now, I'll just give a hypothetical question, and from there, you should be able to deduce what we are going to be treating today. It goes like this. Mrs. Annabelle owns a shop at the Fundi Market in Yaoundé. She has been running her shop for about 10 years. She buys and resells fashion cloth, like what I'm putting on. She runs the shop alone and enjoys her profits alone. What type of business is Mrs. Annabelle operating? The answer is that, first, Mrs. Annabelle is a businesswoman or a trader. Because remember, we've said she has been running this shop for about 10 years. Meaning it's a regular activity, it's a regular occupation. And then secondly, she is operating a one-man business, also known as a sole proprietorship business or a sole trader. Sole simply means alone. Okay, <clears throat> let's proceed. What therefore is a business organization? You know, we cannot treat this topic without you, first of all, being able to define a business organization. What is a business organization? A business organization is an entity formed for the purpose of carrying on commercial enterprise or commercial activities. We all know that the main aim 
of any commercial activity is to do what? To make profit, or what you commonly call to make gain. In Cameroon, commercial organizations and businesses in general is being regulated by the UHADA Uniform Act on Commercial Companies and Economic Interest Group. Remember, the UHADA Uniform Act was signed in Port Mauritius, Port Saint Mauritius, in uh, October 1993, and we have a whole lot of uniform acts. But the one governing commercial activities is the UHADA Uniform Act on Commercial Companies and Economic Interest Groups. So, from the definition of business units, we'll go further to look at the types of business units that exist. It is worth noting that a business can either be run individually or collectively. When we talk about individual running a business, it means a single person running his business single-handedly. And when we talk about running a business collectively, it means a group of persons it can be two or more coming together to jointly run a business. So, at the individual level, we have what we call the sole proprietorship or the sole trader. I earlier said sole simply means one person. While at the collective level, we have partnerships and joint stock company. Partnership meaning more than one person coming together, one or two, three, four, it depends on the number. When we get to that, we'll see, we'll see it. Now, what is a sole proprietorship or sole trader all about? A sole proprietorship is a type of business that is being owned and controlled by one person. He may, however, employ or employ a limited number of workers to assist him. For example, at the beginning of the lesson, I introduced Madame or Mrs. Annabelle, who has a shop at Infonti Market. There, she does not sell alone. She has about three or four sales agents. But it, they are not part and parcel of the business. They are just helping her. She's the sole owner of the business. So it does not limit a sole owner of a business to employ few persons to help her or assist him or her in her business. The sole trader bears all the losses as well as he enjoys all the profits of the business alone because he takes all the risk alone. So if there is a profit, he enjoys it alone. If there is a loss, he equally bears the loss alone. So an example of a sole trader includes news agents, provision store owners, like the store owners you have in the various quarters where you go and buy bread every morning before you come to school. You can see a clear picture of a sole proprietor. You see him standing alone and he has his clock because he's going to his business. He's alone in the business, so he's a sole proprietor. What are the advantages or the merits of a sole proprietorship business? The first is that he is independent and he acts as he pleases, meaning he takes his decisions alone without asking any body. That is the first. Secondly, he keeps all the profit to himself and this encourages him to work harder because he knows that if he sleeps, he will not have profit. But if he works hard, he will have the profit and everything will come to his pocket. Thirdly, he has personal contact with his, with his customers and knows most of their tastes. Like I, I just saw, to the example of Mrs. Annabelle, he knows that Madame Mary loves flare gowns, and so wherever she has flare gowns, she'll contact me that Madame, I brought new things that you like. So you see, for a sole proprietorship business, they have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with their customers, and this helps them to know the tastes of the things that their customers like. Fourthly, he or she encounters fewer formalities in the course of setting up or establishes his, establishing his business. What do we mean by formalities? You know, for you to register your business in Cameroon, there are various steps that you must take. For a sole proprietorship, he is just alone, so he does not need the approval of any other person. 
Are we getting it? So he encounters fewer formalities. Meaning it saves his or her time. So you can clearly see a beautiful picture accompanying the advantages of sole proprietorship business. The first is that the ownership is sole, that is, he's a single owner of his business. Secondly, he does not share his profit with anybody. All the profit goes to him. Thirdly, the capital comes from his personal pocket. It's a one-man capital. So he knows how to raise his capital. He can go to Xinjiang groups. He can borrow from family members. We don't know where he can get his profit from, but the capital is from a single pocket. Fourthly, the business has unlimited liability. What do we mean by this? We simply mean that if he raises his capital and starts a business, and all of a sudden, the business crumbles, it means his personal property can be seized for in order for the money that he borrowed to start up the business to be recovered. Fifthly, there is less legal formalities, as I just said earlier on. And the last point is that the business is controlled by one man. You see it fairly there, one man control. Great. We realize that apart from these numerous advantages of sole proprietorship business that we have enumerated above, there are other things that can bring down a sole proprietorship business. So we'll be looking at the disadvantages of sole proprietorship. What are the disadvantages or the demerits of you are already in opposite, so you should be used to certain terms. In your example, you can see disadvantages or demerits. They mean the same thing. So, what are the demerits or disadvantages of sole proprietorship? First, he suffers from unlimited liability. I explained that one earlier on. Meaning, if he borrows money to start up a business, if that business crumbles, his property, his personal property will be sold in order for the money to be recovered. Secondly, he may suffer from lack of capital or shortage of capital to expand his business. Remember, we said he's there alone. So if he's facing difficulties, the business will obviously face difficulties as well. Thirdly, he is unable to enjoy the benefits of economies of large-scale production. Remember, those other economies which or who are not so in a sole proprietorship business, if I can put it that way, they have other advantages as far as borrowing money from banks is concerned. But with a sole proprietor, they will only give the sole proprietor up to the extent of the property that he alone has. So he will not enjoy the benefits of those other people. Let me say it's a partnership. A can have maybe a very big estate, another person can have a very big house, and that will help them to acquire more capital from the bank if they want to borrow. But if it's a sole proprietor, you know his advantages as far as borrowing money in a bank is limited. Fourthly, he bears all the burdens of his business alone. If the business is flourishing, he will enjoy. If the business is crumbling, facing economic crisis, COVID-19 and all the like, the businessman, the sole proprietor will equally do what? Suffer. And lastly, the business may suffer from lack of continuity. What do we mean by this? If the sole proprietor dies, his business too may crumble, it will fall if he does not have any competent person that can help handle his business. So automatically if he dies, his business too will die. Those are the disadvantages of sole proprietorship. And remember, we said he equally has difficulties in raising capital for the business because he's a loan. All right. Now, apart from sole proprietorship as an unlimited liability business, we have a second uh, type of online, uh, unlimited liability business, which is the partnership. From the word partner, you already know what we are talking about. Partner simply means more than one person, like two or more people coming together. What therefore is a partnership business? This is the relationship which subsists between two or more persons carrying on a business in common with the view to make 
profit. Meaning, two or three persons or more coming together, putting their, ha their heads together to start up a business with the aim of making profit. It is worth noting that partnership, generally speaking, is limited to 20 persons. That is what the law stipulates. And if it is in the case of banking, the partnership is limited to 10 persons only. So remember, in other businesses, it's 20 persons. But when it comes to banking, it is limited to 10 persons. The liability for partners in partnership is generally unlimited. That is why we said at the beginning that it falls under unlimited liability businesses. You can see a clear picture of two people trying to put their heads together to form a partnership. So Mr. A and Mr. B, they want to start up a profitable business. There are two types of partnership. On the one hand, we have the ordinary partnership. What is the ordinary partnership? Yeah, all partners have equal rights and duties. And therefore, every partner has the duty to manage the business, even if they don't have a salary. So it is their duty to manage and carry out the business well. So all partners will be equally liable if the partnership owes debt. What do we mean by liable? If they go and borrow money on behalf of the business, so long as you are a partner or a member of that business, that debt equally you will equally be liable to pay the debt. Because if it is benefit, it will equally be shared amongst you. So if it is equally debt, you are liable to equally pay the debt. And the second type of partnership is the limited partnership. What is the limited partnership? Yeah, first of all, one of the partners at least must be made an ordinary partner. Why the other partners are limited partner? I will explain. The ordinary partner will be responsible for running the business and for the partnership, partnership debt. That is his role. Now, the limited partners, also known as the dormant or sleeping partner, cannot manage the business. From the word dormant, sleeping, you see that the person is already having a, a defect. So, that kind of a partner will not be given the responsibility to do what? To manage the business. Because if you give a dormant or sleeping partner the, the right to manage the business, the business will crumble. So sleeping partners, their role is just that. They just sit and watch how the business is unfolding. His responsibility towards the partnership debts is limited to the amount he has invested in the business. Now we are talking about a dormant or a sleeping partner. Their responsibility towards the partnership debt is limited to the amount of money they invested in the business. He enjoys limited liability. Meaning, if we are to form a business, let me say I want to create or own a business, Mary and Co., and I have some partners. Let me say I have Madame uh, Baby to join me. I have uh, Madame Caroline to join me and other viable people that can help me run, that we can jointly run the business for, for our benefits together, we realize that there are others who will tell you that I'm just giving my money because I am not put in business, but I just want to invest my money where I can be gaining something even if it is small. So that kind of a partner is called a sleeping or a dormant partner. It's just they're watching you people do the business. So his own responsibility towards this partnership debt, if you go and borrow money in the bank, will be limited to the amount of money that he has given in his contribution. If the business is a business of 10 billion, and that partner gave, let me say, 5 million, and then you go and borrow money, like 100 million to start up a business, when they'll be dividing the debts for people to pay, such a partner will only pay up to the amount of that is 5 million. And so he will equally enjoy limited liability in terms of profit. Advantages of partnership. Firstly, 
more capital is contributed into the business. Because here we are not talking about one man business, but we are talking about the business of several people coming together. So more, bis more capital will be contributed into business. Secondly, there will be division of labor. Each person will have a role to play. Because first of all, they are different individuals with different expertise knowledge. Somebody can be very good in buying and debating prices. Another can be very good in commercializing their products that you are selling. So there will be division of labor. Thirdly, ideas from partners could hit better results. A will give his own, his own idea, B, C, D. And you realize that at the end of the day, they say two heads are better than one. So ideas from the different partner will help the business to grow and the results of that business will be more better than if it were to be handled by a single person. Fourthly, all business records are kept secret. That is a very important item. So you can see on the board, we have a picture of two people breaking together. Those are partners. I don't know whether it's Bill Gates and who they are coming together to do a very profitable business. You can see them well dressed in suits and ties. So they are British people. I don't know what they are trying to do. They are they Americans. I don't know. But those are two people coming together to start up a business. All right. Another advantage of partnership is that the benefit from bulk buying. Because you see, we say first of all, there's division of labor, meaning each and every one of them can have different connections. And so it can help them to buy more goods. So the benefit from bulk buying, and there is the possibility of continuity. In case one person dies, the business will not stop. The other partners are there, they will continue with the business. We have the case in Cameroon, a practical case of Kaji, Kaji B.A. He has died, he died last year or last two years, if I'm not mistaken, and the business is still there, flourishing, because he had other partners who have been working with him. And then, they equally enjoy benefits of large scale production, and even they can raise more capital than a sole proprietorship. They even have the advantages to do what? To borrow from a bank because their collateral will be more and more solid than that of a sole proprietor. This does not mean that as we have enumerated several advantages of a partnership business, they don't have disadvantage. So now we're looking at some of the disadvantages of partnership business. And the first is that it is it falls under the category of limited liability company or businesses. Secondly, when there is profit, it does not go to one pocket. It will be shared among all their partners. Thirdly, there is a risk of, con a risk of conflict or disagreement. We know where two or three are gathered. A's idea might not necessarily be accepted by B. So most of the times you have the risk of what? Disagreement and conflict. And the, the, the fourth point is that Decisions are not taken quickly. Why? Because for a decision to be taken in a partnership business, all the other partners must be consulted. So you realize that there can be a business that can just take 24 hours to mature, but one person is unreachable. You realize that it might handicap their procedure. So for decisions to be taken it is not actually easy as far as partnership business is concerned. Now we move straight to our application exercises. Question one, what is a business unit? We said a business unit is an entity formed for the purpose of carrying on commercial enterprise. Question two, state the types of business units with unlimited liability. We have just two. We have the sole proprietorship and the partnership. Question three, state three advantages of sole proprietorship. One, the sole proprietor is independent and he acts as he pleases. Two, he keeps all his profit to himself and he encourages him to work harder. Three, he has personal contact with his customers and knows most of their tastes. Now, I cannot leave you to go home without you having an assignment to do for me at home. And remember, in our next class, 
That will be the first thing that we'll check before we dive into the new lesson. The assignment goes thus. Which document or which is the document containing written laws in Cameroon that is used to regulate commercial transaction? You mentioned it above. So, for us to come up with this beautiful lesson that we had today, we had to make reference to certain documents. You know, nobody owns the monopoly of knowledge, so we had to refer ourselves to the Ohada Uniform Act, or you can call them the, the Ohada Law. We had the Uniform Act on Commercial Companies and Economic Interest Groups of 1993, and we made reference to Advanced Level Law, an Integrated Approach by Gua Oliver Shu. Okay, thank you, fellow students. See you in our next class. Remember to go through the next lesson. Our next lesson is titled Limited Liability Companies. Una tege si, ma tege yop, una tege minga, ma tege nyum, una tege majang, ma tege ndom, ma ne tambia niña ne injubia yen, ngani bana, ma tege mot, ngani la kiri wa tege ndong, esa kina bia jinkido, ma ne tambia niña ne injubia yen, tam tama mote tam zabike. Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tam bia niña ne injo bia yen.